More Shawnee Mission engineering students can now get the lay of the land after a grant gets them some new equipment. The district breaks ground on the Center for Academic Achievement, which will house several of its popular signature programs. District leaders implement new safety protocols for Shawnee Mission sporting events. And some elementary students learn how to lasso up success the American Royal way. It's all ahead on this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Welcome to Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. I'm your host, Leanne Neal. What do you do if it's a nice day and you're part of Shawnee Mission's engineering signature program? Why, you head out to the football field, of course. Project Lead the Way students took advantage of the nice day to try out their new surveying equipment purchased through a $2,000 grant from the Shawnee Mission Education Foundation. It's really a concept called differential leveling where we take the surveying equipment and uh, we go from a known elevation, a benchmark, and then they're trying to establish new elevations and they're checking the elevation of the football field. This is their very first taste of really using these instruments accurately and so we're, they're learning the concept of a backside and a foresight and finding unknown elevations. First we got the backside over there and then naturally the football field kind of like supposed to go like this so we're trying to see if it's like higher in the middle. In the past Project Lead the Way's limited amount of equipment forced students to work in large groups. That meant only a few students really got hands-on experience with the professional survey equipment. Now the additional equipment means students work in pairs and everyone gets to learn the equipment. Now I'm thinking about maybe going into engineering in college and it's pretty cool, especially since we're the only school at, in the Cheyenne Mission District to get to have this class and have the opportunity to do this. I was just talking to a general contractor who was frustrated because his workers and even some higher type of workers that, that work for his firm did not understand the concepts of this leveling, differential leveling. Instead, they used GPS, and when the GPS didn't work, they didn't quite have the concept, and so he was a little frustrated. So I do believe this is a very important concept that's going to help students have a good background in engineering. It was really cool, like it makes it more real, so then if anyone decides that they do want to do this, they have a background in using it. I'm just very excited to have this equipment, and I'm thankful for the support we have. There's a big change coming for Project Lead the Way and several of the district's other signature programs. They're about to get a brand new home. One, two, and let's turn dirt. Woo! District leaders joined by representatives from J.E. Dunn Construction and ACI Boland Architects broke ground on the new Center for Academic Achievement. Some of you knew this as the old Milburn Junior High School. You knew this site as the old Milburn Junior High School. And of course, then it was the Antioch Middle School. And uh, it's going to be the new Center for Academic Achievement in the Shawnee Mission School District. And so once you see the inside and what it's going to look like, uh, it's really innovative and creative. And it really makes a statement to our community about what we can prepare for our students and what the future is really like in the Shawnee Mission School District. The current building design includes two wings connected by a cafe and a large public area that would seat about 250 for presentations and events. The new facility will also bring Shawnee Mission's administrative operations together. All of the administrative services that have been at McEachin, Indian Creek, Broadmoor, and Arrowhead, they will all come to this site. Biomedical, biotechnology, the bistro, the culinary arts program project lead the way. They will all come to this location as well. Bringing all our administrators in under one roof is going to create a number of efficiencies. It'll save us $2 million a year, something like that. Uh, the building from its outset is designed to be a very uh, community inside the building, collaboration, openness. We're uh, made strides to make sure the building's a healthy building uh, for its occupants and its users. Uh, we're very, very excited for that process to begin today. With several bond-funded elementary building projects in the works, the district is funding the Center for Academic Achievement through capital outlay funds. Thank you once again for allowing our company to have the honor and privilege of serving as the builder of your new facility. The investment made by the Shine Mission School District for this new facility demonstrates the commitment to excellence in providing the very, very best resources for the children of this community. 
we want to say, uh, even though it's not a bond project, we still want to say thank you to the community for their support because we are building other elementary schools and many things coming forward. So uh, simply want to say thank you. The Center for Academic Achievement is scheduled to be completed in late 2016 or early 2017. Up next, Shawnee Mission partners with emergency responders on a new plan to react to injuries on the football field. Hi, my name is Ben, and I read the book The Great American Dust Bowl, written and illustrated by Don Brown. In this comic book style book, readers learn more about the dust storms that rolled across the prairie in April of 1935. Billions and billions of specks of dust rolled across the land, creating darkness and fear. The drought lasted for more than three years, ruined crops, made people sick, and covered everything in dust. By the end of the 1930s, Many people had fled from their homes because dust had destroyed their farms. Droughts returned to the plains again, but we have never had another dust bowl. I give this book four and a half out of five stars because the story was interesting and the comic book style made it fun to read. Welcome back. We're accustomed to seeing teamwork on the football field at Shawnee Mission's district stadiums. Now there's another team that's been practicing to make sure they're ready to help if needed. Just let me know when you have control of it and I'll take okay. off the helmet. You could call these people the team behind the teams. Emergency responders and Shawnee Mission School District personnel working together to plan for and practice what they would do if there's an emergency on the football field. Uh, we're working on uh, removing kids uh, from a field if there was a catastrophic injury, whether it's a spinal injury or something worse, um, and, and we're uh, getting coordination between the EMS and our athletic trainers and our team physicians and um, making sure there's a, a, everybody's working in unison for the safety of the kids. One, two, three. When a serious injury happens on the football field, this is the team that goes into action. But in the past, there were questions about who did what and when equipment such as helmets and shoulder pads should be removed. It used to be kind of there were some discrepancies on who's in charge of taking off the equipment. Do we take it off here on the field? Do we put them in the ambulance? Do the paramedics take off the equipment? So the idea is we'll get everyone trained, equipment will come off on the field, and then we'll transport. The school personnel and the ambulance and fire personnel are all working on the same sheet of paper. So we're all trying to get to that same end. Part of the impetus for this new coordination comes from some new equipment that the district purchased, helmets that feature a quick release face mask. You want to be able to remove that face mask easily so that you could, if their airway was obstructed or they weren't breathing, you could start CPR and those sort of things. And um, these how much, or the face masks you can get off in about 10 seconds. Another change made with safety in mind is a partnership with Johnson County MedAct to provide two paramedics in a fully operational SUV on the grounds at the two district football stadiums any time a varsity game is being played. Johnson County MedAct does a standby with an ALS ambulance at every sporting event. So if they have an injury or something where they require immediate transport, there's always a unit there. Let's go ahead and work on trying to get his helmet removed. The paramedics are trained and equipped to deal with any medical situation that may arise for an athlete, coach, or even spectator. And we want everybody to stay healthy and safe and um, you know, we provide the equipment that keeps them that way. Johnson County Med Act provides the paramedics at the Shawnee Mission North District Stadium. The Overland Park Fire Department provides the paramedics at the Shawnee Mission South District Stadium. This great partnership illustrates the district's commitment to providing the safest environment possible at these events. Coming up, teachers get creative and discover that STEM careers come in all shapes and sizes. Plus, 
bringing aspects of agriculture into the classroom when Spotlight on Shawnee Mission returns. Welcome back. What is the best way to cultivate the next generation of science, technology, engineering, and math leaders? That was the topic at a summit of educators and engineering professionals hosted by Burns and McDonnell. I'm just so excited to have you all here today at our first Educators Summit. More than 100 teachers from the Shawnee Mission School District attended the event to learn more about STEM careers and how they can better prepare students for a career in a STEM field. I think America's abundance has never been greater. There's never been more potential. But we have this gaping hole called STEM education. And just a few years from now, we're going to be short 2 million STEM graduates every year in America from the jobs that are going to be available in our country. During the summit, educators were encouraged to think about STEM careers in a much broader way. So what we're going to present to Kansas City educators today is the careers that are created from STEM. Because it's not just engineering careers, although I think those are pretty awesome. It's medicine. It's IT. It's environmental specialties. It's design and detailing. Participants heard from a lineup of speakers, including Beth Pearson, an engineer today, who credits her high school science teacher with getting her to first think about a STEM career. I didn't necessarily know what that meant. I didn't know what that invitation entailed. And as I got into it, and as I got further along in my, my degree and out in the profession, I realized that what she was asking me to do was to be part of a team of people, including scientists, engineers, technical professions, and the crafts, to be a part of solving the problems that are facing the world today. Educators were encouraged to think beyond stereotypes when it comes to students who may be thinking about a STEM career. It's design and detailing, and we want them to see all the opportunities that are available to STEM kids and make sure that they know that it's not just the smartest kid in the class that can have a great STEM career, or even worse, it's not just the smartest boy in class who can have a great STEM career. The teachers also had an opportunity to put their creativity to the test with a game called Disrupt, where they were given an object, such as a traditional parking meter, and then challenged to come up with a better way to achieve the same purpose. And uh, that way it can uh, I'll track exactly how many minutes a person is parked there and charge them accordingly per month. The teachers left with lots of information about future local opportunities to help their students learn more about STEM exploration and careers. And we have to make sure that every educator in our town knows that the opportunity is for them to make a real difference this year and make sure they're encouraging kids towards a proper and, and important STEM education. And so the future of Kansas City, the future of our country is dependent, is absolutely dependent on the future of STEM education. Up next, students learn to spell success the American Royal Way.
I'm Jaden and I'm Luke and we read the True Blue Scouts of Sugar Man Swamp by Kathy Appel. Do you believe they're destroying the swamp to build an alligator wrestling arena? Yes, but luckily we have a few heroes to help stop that. Like Bingo and Jemaya, the smart and cunning raccoons. And Chap, the six foot tall 12 year old boy. Throughout the story, Bingo and Jemaya have a few hardships throughout the way. They have to face cane break rattlers and have to keep Jerritoot away from the sugar man. Chap's grandfather dies and his family is in massive debt. Will they be able to save their beautiful swamp or will they face severe consequences and have their beautiful swamp destroyed? Read the book to find out. We rate this book four out of five stars because of its amazing dialogue and good plot twists. We hope you love this book. Welcome back. Rose Hill Elementary students now know what it takes to cowboy and cowgirl up after a visit from a very special breed of lawman. So, if you guys are ready to have some fun, say yee haw! Yee T. Texas Terry, the official sheriff of the American Royal, stopped by Rose Hill to deliver a very special message. You're going to see right here, right now, how cowboys and cowgirls at the American Royal that cowboy and cowgirl up to success. And Sheriff Terry's key, learning to follow the royal way. The first secret to success is the letter R, and that stands for respect. Everybody say respect. The visit is part of a grant provided by the American Royals Neighborhood Schools Partnership. In this day and age, it's hard to believe, but when I walk into the schools, they automatically go, it's a cowboy. Howdy, cowboy. Oh my gosh, and what are you here for? Hey, I'll see you at the assembly. Just a great way to, to go through life is helping people laugh and learn. And I love it. Edutainment, they call it. Rose Hill was selected as one of five neighborhood schools to receive the grant that will help expose students to programming focused on helping students learn more about agriculture. So the Neighborhood Schools program involves a couple uh, areas of outreach. So it's bringing the kids in for school tours, to see agricultural exhibits in the youth rodeo, coming to a horse show, bringing Sheriff Terry in like we did today with a school assembly, and then also incorporating agricultural education into the classroom. So we'll be coming back into Rose Hill and talking about agriculture. Don't move. Look, you guys, I just got me an American Royal Cowboy. Get me it's around the world. Learning and fun all in one. But little did these students know, as part of the American Royal Partner Program, this is just phase one. The kids will be coming to the American Royal in a few weeks um, to be do hands-on learning in the youth rodeo, and that is so much fun. It's a great way to teach about agriculture and about our Western heritage, and talk about science, the science of agriculture, and the technology involved, and, and talk about career exploration as well. So the kids are having a great time. At the American Royal, students got to see how agriculture plays a part in so much of their lives. For example, lamb's wool being spun into yarn, or seeing what it is like to milk a cow. There were about 2,000 kids that went through today. They go through all these stations and learn about agriculture, animals, everything ag-related, how it touches every aspect of your life. A lot of these kids don't understand that. A meal appears before them, they don't know where it comes from. So there's a whole strand of companies all related to animal health. And they are looking for scientists and they need people who understand agriculture and understand science to be there and working at their company. So Kansas City is ripe to, for us to introduce kids to these types of things and so that they can work at these companies that are doing so well here. For a lot of the students, one of the highlights of the day is going through the petting zoo. We saw some animals and they got to pet them and they were fluffy. It's such a great learning opportunity to get out of the classroom, it's relevant, it's stuff that they get to you know, experience every day that may not understand they're experiencing it, but now seeing where it comes from, it's just a good opportunity for the kids to be in a learning environment outside of a classroom and understand that you can learn when you're not at school. That learning, you know, it takes place everywhere and there's so many opportunities for it besides the classroom. I love events like this. I think it's a good opportunity for students to see what we're studying um, and how it's relevant in real life in different ways. 
So it's exciting for them. It's a different atmosphere than our classroom, and it keeps them engaged a lot longer. Beautiful net catch. The students also get to see Youth Rodeo, where high school age students put their barrel racing skills to the test. Jason, Ava, and Rosie could hardly contain their excitement. Because I like, you get to go to like different kind of places and you get to learn and it's a like, fun adventure. And you get to learn like new and awesome things. And you get to explore around places. Like right now, we're looking at the rodeo. <laughs> Thanks to our partners at the American Royal for sharing these special experiences with the Rose Hill Rockets. That's all the time we have for this episode of Spotlight on Shawnee Mission. Join us again as we continue to feature the programs and people of Shawnee Mission who are helping guide students to success. Thank you for watching.